Good morning, everyone. I'm joined today by the fire chief from Polk County Fire Rescue, uh, Chief Weech, and also Joe Hallman, who is the deputy county commissioner and a former chief at the sheriff's office, is with us today. And we're going to talk about an, kind of phase two of last week I was up here saying you can't police yourself or police the community until you first police yourself. And I told you about a deputy and his misdeeds. Today we're going to give you like deja vu at the fire department. The fire department has the same exact attitude. You can't serve the community until you first serve and protect and police yourself. We received a call from Polk Fire Rescue that they thought there was some criminal conduct afoot as it relates to the uh, use of COVID-19 vaccinations. And here's how it started. Battalion Chief Gorakov, Eugene Gorakov, was going through paperwork from paramedic Joshua Colon. And he was going through this paperwork because Joshua was assigned doses of the COVID-19 vaccine that he was supposed to give to other firefighters. And there were discrepancies on three different forms. And he first told Cologne, hey, I need that paperwork. And then when it came in, it was messed up. I mean, there was misspellings, there was no date of birth, there was just total, total confusion on these three forms. So the battalion chief gets back with the paramedic again. This all is, begins at sometime after January the 6th when paramedic Cologne was issued the vaccinations to, to give to the firefighters. And still with the battalion chief's frustration, he recognized the name of one of the three people. So he called him up on the phone and he said, hey man, he said, we're trying to get this paperwork straight. Uh, can you give me your date of birth? He said, for what? He said, well, for the vaccination. He goes, I didn't get a vaccination. I'm no longer a firefighter. I did, he said, you didn't fill out this paperwork and we didn't, uh, paramedic didn't give you a vaccination. He says, not at all. So that's when we were notified. We started this investigation and that's what we learned that Joshua Cologne, who's 31 years of age, and in fact, he was the 2020 firefighter of the year, was giving three vials with about 10 doses in each vial. And his job was to go to the different firefighters who requested the vaccination as a first responder and administer the dosage. We found the paperwork was totally messed up as the bat chief discovered. And ultimately we met Mr. Cologne in the office of his lawyer. And he said, hey, I want to totally cooperate. I have embarrassed the fire service and I falsified the paperwork. I used two false names a Scott Keller, and Scott Keller does not exist. And I also used an Alexander Demmer, D-I-M-E-R, which is similar, but not, which is similar to, but not a firefighter that he knows. So he didn't use Alexander, the firefighter, as his victim, but he made up a name similar to that in order to fool the system. So he even went so far as to dummy up some email addresses to email from Scott Keller back to the bat chief saying, hey, I've, I've got my stuff. He confessed. He said, I made all that up. I made up the one real victim and I made up the other two names I made up the email stuff that I sent. It was all fraudulent. It was wrong. We go, why would you do that? He said, well, he said there's this captain, 
and I give you the captain's name because he's under criminal investigation. He would be arrested today, but he's on his way back from out west. He will be arrested upon his arrival here. There's a captain at the fire department called Tony DiAmano. And Tony supposedly went to Joshua Cologne and said, you know, I'd like some vaccine for my mother. And Joshua Cologne said, rebuffed him, said, no, I, I can't do that. So he made several requests of this vaccine from the paramedic. And the captain was told, I can't do that. So what occurred was there were three syringes with three doses of the vaccine that Joshua Cologne put in a plastic bag, put in a special refrigerator, and sealed it. And then at the direction of the captain, he took a break. So he left, take a break, and when he came back, voila, the seal's broken, and the vaccinations are gone. Cologne says, I didn't see who had them, who took them, but there was a reckoning day because he has to have paperwork for every dosage, and now there's three doses for which he has no paperwork, and that's why he made up the stories and the false documents that he did. So we are not sure about Cologne's story, so we said, well, why don't you get the captain on the phone? So they get Captain Tony Diamano on the phone, and he's saying, hey, I need those vaccinations back. He says, I'm in trouble administratively. I need them. So they're having this conversation, and he said, well, I'm out west, but the vaccinations are in my car at a friend's house, and the friend lives in St. Cloud. Now, the friend and her husband and this Captain DeAmano are on this National Disaster Medical System response team. They have all been deployed out to California to help with the COVID disasters out there. We arrive in St. Cloud at the friend's house. Her name's Kim. She goes, hey, I just received text to say, and she was not at home at the time. She says, I, I, took, I went home, I took the vaccines out of the trunk of the car, put them on the front seat because this Joshua Cologne supposed to come get them. So we get text messages between the captain and his friend Kim, and she go, of course, she doesn't know anything about anything. She is just a totally innocent victim, but she is taking these three, these three uh, doses of COVID out of the trunk of the car and put them on the front seat. We arrive. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office was fantastic. They helped us. We had got a search warrant. We recovered two doses. We still don't know where the one syringe and the one dose is, but we recovered two doses. But interesting enough, even though that Captain DeAmano said it in jest, ha ha, he said, maybe you want to, or uh, wipe the fingerprints off of the off of the bag. That's what he told Kim. So keep in mind, we've given you a a highlight of a detailed text and conversations that have gone on between these period, all of these people during this period of time. But the bottom line is, Joshua tried to cover for the captain. Joshua set up the circumstance for the vaccines to have been stolen. Had Joshua simply gone to his boss right then, he'd have been the hero. But instead, he started falsifying paperwork, making up people who didn't exist to cover it up. He went to jail for a litany of charges. Just as soon as the captain arrives back from the West Coast, supposedly, he stopped in Las Vegas and is driving an RV back is supposed to be back sometime tonight. We will talk with him either late tonight or in the morning. 
you might as well go ahead and turn yourself in. You can run, but you can't hide. The deal's over. You're going to jail, Captain Diamano, for being a crook, for stealing. You're also going to jail because you abused your authority. We take this sacred trust very serious. Our firefighters are our heroes. They save lives. They run in when all others are running out. We're very proud of them. But there's always going to be one that occasionally does something wrong, and they're going to be held accountable. When it goes from a disciplinary issue to a criminal issue, then we're going to get involved and put them in jail, and that's what we did on this particular occasion. I only have one question for them. What were you thinking? Did you only have three brain cells? I mean, how's that going to work? Hi, Mom. I got this shot. Oh, do I give it to you now, or do I wait two weeks while it sets in a car in an airport parking lot? I, I mean, none of it makes any sense. It's crazy. But there's going to be criminal accountability, and I'll turn it over to Fire Chief Weech. Once again, Chief, I uh, commend your team. Your internal controls saw something was wrong and drew attention to that. And that's why we, we were able to do what we did and to guarantee the validity of the checks and balance system that you have at the fire, fire department. We appreciate that. So Chief. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm uh, Polk County Fire Rescue Fire, fire Chief Robert Weech. And like the Sheriff said, uh, we were going through routine paperwork as we do with every vaccine. You know, we have a responsibility to uphold the, the community trust. And uh, we found an, uh, one of these opportunities. We did not do that. We take that very seriously. Certainly not indicative of what we do at Polk County Fire Rescue or in the fire rescue industry. We had some discrepancies in the paperwork we couldn't explain or get to the bottom of. We uh, contacted the authorities and that's why we're here today. Uh, um, again, it's, uh, it's a matter of public trust. We take that seriously and uh, we, we thought we had a reportable issue. Turns out we did and uh, we went through the proper channels. Um, and uh, that's all the statement I have. You have any, any questions, questions for me? What's their employment status right now? Uh, Mr. Cologne has resigned as of yesterday, and uh, Captain Damiano is still an a employee in good standing, although that may change here very soon. How well, disappointing for something like this to occur? It's absolutely disappointing from, from my perspective. Not only were you responsible for withholding public trust, but we had a special duty, and that was to deliver the vaccine to the first responders that are out there helping the public. And so um, to have any discrepancy is certainly something we take seriously and we want to look into, but uh, something of this magnitude where inappropriate allocation, falsifying documents, um, getting others involved in it, certainly we're, we're, we're deeply disappointed in that. Definitely not what we're mean as a fire rescue department, Polk County Fire Rescue, but um, deeply disappointed. Was this a new task for Joshua? Did he not know he was going to have to do paperwork or could there be more missing? This was not a new task. It had been completed successfully in, in the past by Joshua um, without incident. Um, this was the first reported incident, first we and only that we know about. We, we don't anticipate any others. It was not a new task. He did understand the task and obviously he, uh, he willfully um, you know, falsified those records. Are the vaccines still viable? I mean, they sat in a car for some period. They are not. They are not viable. What's Damiano's first name? Anthony. How surprised were you, Chief? Because I, I Googled Mr. Cologne, and I think the sheriff said he was 2020 Firefighter of the Year. He was recognized last month for his involvement with the pandemic. Um, yeah, this was something that didn't meet his character. So when the, the discrepancy was brought to me, um, Certainly, I, I was trying to reconcile it for myself. Um, I made a couple of phone calls that were on some of the paperwork. Uh, I made some attempts to, to get to the bottom of it myself. Obviously, I couldn't do that. So faced with the facts, I had to go to the, to the authorities. Josh Cologne was, was, was a trusted employee. He was paramedic of the year just recently. We honored his accomplishments. He worked very, very hard. I consider this to be out of character for him, but of a serious discrepancy. And uh, I, I would... Um, I'm confident in saying he made uh, some, some severe mistakes. So Cologne really didn't get any benefit out of this, right? He was just doing with his supervisor ordering? It's not appeared to me that uh, he benefited at all. There's a hint in 
the press release to some kind of blackmail, potentially, that the captain was going to say, oh, I'm going to say that you stole the, the vaccines or something, right? I'm not aware of those details. Maybe the sheriff is. Three doses were stolen, but he said that he needed it for his parents. So it's mom, dad, and who else? I'm not aware. Don't know. Is there going to be any changes now with the checks and balances of the issue of we, the checks and balances, the controls in place, we identified this person, so we feel confident that any first future discrepancies will be caught. We're actually pretty confident and pretty, pretty happy that what was in place was something that uh, identified these, these issues and these mistakes. So we're not planning any changes, but we'll definitely take a harder look at, at these things as, as we move forward. Can you speak at all to the captain and what his background was? Excuse me? Can you speak to the captain and his background with the department? Uh, captain Damiano has been employed with Polk County Fire Rescue for 17 years, and he's been a captain for 14 of those years, and he's assigned to special operations. Sheriff, what charges could the captain face? Well, certainly he's, he is going to face charges of theft and official misconduct. And during his 17 years, at, at one period of time, he was a reserve deputy with us. So he clearly and unequivocally understands the law and knows he violated the law. This is Joshua. This is the face of a guy who gave up his public trust when he falsified reports. And we'll have a picture to go right here of Damiano just as soon as we arrest him and take him into custody and we'll present that to you later. But at the end of the day, 